God's falling shares. I saw him paper today. You bend but do not break. A strike at your plan, six workers shot, your shares falling, and still you call for more dynamite. There is great unrest. And they say Red Molly's been seen. She goes from door to door, spreading revolution among the working men. And not one of us knows her face. Yet she always reveals herself at the crucial moment. How do we stop what we cannot see? She's been seen. Among the Germans. The immigrants. I see them in the streets, a great mass, anonymous, and that's her safety. Unknown, she forces us to make ourselves known. What do you hear of the Reverend Sunday? I hear he's had a great success in quieting the working man. Is he temperance? The saloon keepers conspired against him, but their bullet lodged in his Bible. He's a light in the darkness here. That Bible should be put on display, say five cents to see it, for educational purposes. I prepared a letter for the Reverend Sunday and one for the police. And my shares? Will you hold them? Your shares falling, a strike at your plant, six workers shot, more to come. Hmm. I'll not betray a fellow Christian in his hour of need. I'll hold your shares. They say Hades the saloon keeper prospers. The working men have a great thirst. For God! No man prospers without God's help. Every question, an answer. A widow inside each wife. Peggy, I bring for a working man. Joe, I heard you were here. Leaving good to you, Jack. Gross. Ah, I miss the old days, Joe. Money has a better name than heaven here. McCormick sees to that. Ah, but his wife. Fair as a coastal town. The poor still make the dresses. McCormick has that respect, Joe. They're great men because they exceed their grasp. Gold, oh, Joe, what can it do? Keep eh? death from men. They live by our labor. The rich have their burdens and death lifts them. They say Molly's with you, Joe. She's in love with our cities. Ah, but she needs eyes and ears. So do McCormick and Field, and they pay for it. Peggy, another drink for the man. Is she here? She's there, but she's needed. You could be some help to us, Jack. Oh, times have changed, Joe. There's a price on all your heads now. I hear they almost got Sunday. Ah, but he lives. He continues to work among the poor. But they say no man knows the hour when his time has come. Like a famine, he feeds on the poor. The old days are gone, Jack. No one need know about them. It's better that way, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, Joe. Mm, it's good beer, Jack. Here's to that red money they speak of. The day they find her, I buy you beer. Keep the gale here back. God's rising shares. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Christian Industrious League, I proudly present this check raised in part by public subscription to Mr. Tribulation P. McCormick of the Citizen Safety Committee. The money will go to build a temple for the Reverend Sunday in view of his great mission among the working men, for he is a light in the darkness here. Mr. McCormick! <laughs> Brethren, on behalf of Reverend Sunday and his employer, I thank you all. Just as the great fire of sin has driven you into the arms of Jesus, so has the great fire here driven you into the arms of your benefactors, the Christian Industrialist League, for all that God has ordained shall come to pass. As many of you know, Reverend Sunday now recovers from a wanton attack upon his life. But I have here the book which saved that life and which will be on display in the lobby following today's ceremony. He drives as hard a bargain as do the wind and rain. Which flow through cities he's destroyed, they would not heed his name. His employees sit in great houses, drinking wine and eating bread. There are those who object to that.
that he knows they've been misled. His sales force is united in a great cause. All of them are listed here in his book of laws. In that free market system of heaven, there's only one chairman of the board. His door is always open, and his salesmen call him the Lord. His salesmen call him the Lord. Morgan Rockefeller, Vanderbilt and Krupp. Read in his book and discover why the poor have no luck. I've been at a rich man's table and heard him widely discuss just what he's accomplished. They say he's one of us. His pledge book is always open. He broods late into the night. And he's told them up and down. Careful, the firm's not losing ground. And the free work system of heaven, there's only one chairman of the board. His door is always open, and his salesmen call him the Lord. His salesmen call him the Lord. In that free market system called heaven, there's only one shepherd of the board. His door is always open, and his salesmen call him the Lord. His salesmen call him the Lord. Tales of a Privateer. Take your seats. You know, time for the working man. I do if it's you, Joe Fleisch. Good. Then we'll have a drink then. I notice Mr. Schoons doesn't come around much anymore. You know Mr. Schoons? Not well, but a friend of mine does. I knew him years ago. I was just a girl then, but I can still see him and Jack Hades too, smoking their cigars and cursing over their cards on that veranda in Zanzibar. Terrible cursing men they were then. Uh, they made a living on the Barbary Coast. For a time. But then Jack Hades would say their luck ran out. But it isn't luck that runs out. It's time. I watched that clock in McCormick's tower. Time runs out for him. That tower makes me cold. It reminds me of a record's like watching for a ship. It's the latest style, Peggy. McCormick paid some Frenchmen to build it for him. Got to know the stone from the best places in Europe. He got this stone cheaper that way. I still don't like it. Jack and Elijah speak of the past only to each other. Some things are better left unsaid. They say Field pays McCormick to keep his history buried. He's not alone. Jack Hay tells a story of a shipmate had taken a wife. Now she had no idea that the arms that had raised her had split a man from head to waist, sir. concerning cutlass and revolver and the great loss of life. Now that sailor and his bride sat together, he'd taken to reading the Bible aloud the day the postman delivered a package addressed to Captain McCloud. The sailor's wife opened the package, saying it's come from the Barbary Coast. When out of that package there rolled a head with a note which read, He put the Bible aside. But the sailor's wife had already packed the steamer to Baltimore, and she never came back. Like a Yankee cutter, adrift on the tide, the sailor's hasn't come home. stories if you'd have been at Jack Hades Saloon in Zanzibar. Jack Hades, he's like that guy you speak of, Peggy. He loves the poor, but he helps the rich. <laughs> 